In this lesson I'm going to demonstrate uh, the recovery of a mailbox database in Exchange Server 2010. So in the last lesson uh, we took a backup of one of the mailbox databases uh, on the test lab server. So that backup was taken on the 17th of February 2012 at 2.14pm. And we'll just have a look in the details here. We can see that it was uh, successful, it was a full backup. So it backed up the database and truncated the transaction log files for us. So if we go now to one of our test mailbox users, uh, so once again this is uh, Alan Reed. All of the items in the mailbox at the moment are from uh, times and dates prior to when that backup was taken. So in other words, that backup will have included these four inbox items in it. So in a normal uh, production scenario, you may take a backup uh, during the middle of the night and then uh, at around 8 o'clock the next morning, uh, most of the staff begin arriving at work. And they begin sending and receiving email again. So you now have data in inboxes that has been uh, created or generated since the last backup occurred and you don't have a backup of that data. However, what you do have is a uh, transaction log history of all of those changes uh, that are being written to your mailbox database. And because we've stored our mailbox database and our transaction logs on different folders, and I'll bring that up uh, now. So the transaction logs are stored here on G Drive, the database is stored here on I Drive. Our server can survive the loss of either one of those drives and the data on it, uh, and we can still perform a recovery uh, right up to the point in time at which the failure occurred and, and uh, preserve all of that data that was generated since the last backup. So uh, it, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to explain that concept. So probably the best thing I can do is actually demonstrate it. So what I'll do first of all is uh, in my uh, Alan Reed mailbox, we'll just create some new mail. So we'll email, uh, send a mail out to the Gmail account. So now we've got a, a sent item that's been generated and we'll also just reply to that email when it arrives. So I'll just uh, send a reply back in so that Alan's inbox also has a new item that has been created uh, since the last backup. Alright, so now let's simulate a failure on the Exchange server itself. I'll start by dismounting the Mailbox Database 2, so make it unavailable. Okay, so that's dismounted. And just quickly have a look at uh, Alan's machine again. We can see he's now got a uh, connection status of trying to connect, so it's lost connection to his, his Mailbox because that database has been dismounted. And if we were to try to log into Outlook Web App, we should see a similar error message. Okay, so your mailbox appears to be unavailable. So for all intents and purposes, that mailbox database is offline uh, and those mailbox users can't access their data. So let's imagine that the uh, iDrive disks had failed and had, uh, had to have been replaced by the hardware vendor. So they've been put back in the server and reformatted and remounted as iDrive, which would mean that all of the data on iDrive, including that folder, would have been lost. So what we would have is just an empty iDrive. So now we can begin our exchange recovery process. So I'll go back into Windows Server Backup and over here in the Actions pane, click Recover. And the backup that we want to recover is stored on this server, the Exchange 2010 server, because I just stored it on local disks. And you get this little calendar view with um, the backup days highlighted in bold. So today is the 17th, that's the day that I took the backup. And you also get a drop down list that will show you the timestamps 
all of the available backup sets for that day. So in our case, it was that backup at 2.14 p.m. Uh, that is the most recent. That's the one that we want to recover. Now here in the recovery types, uh, we get to choose uh, whether we want to just restore files and folders, restore entire volumes, or perform an application restore. So in the case of Exchange, we want to perform an application restore. So Windows Server Backup is able to detect that Exchange was the application uh, that was stored in that backup set. If we click on View Details here, it actually tells us which information store instance was backed up. Now what you get is this uh, string of numbers and characters instead of the actual mailbox database name. So that's actually the good of the mailbox database. And if you're not sure which one uh, it's actually referring to, you can have a look in the Exchange Management Shell and run get mailbox database and just select the name and GUID of each uh, mailbox database and I'll just format those as a table. Okay, so the backup is showing that uh, mailbox database with GUID 2E821 is the one that it's got here and we can see that that 2E821 corresponds with mailbox database 2. So that is the one that we want to recover. So we know we've got the right backup set that we're performing this restore from. We also have this checkbox here about whether we want to perform a roll forward recovery of the application databases. So in this case a roll forward recovery is what we want to perform. So we leave that checkbox uncleared and what that means is that after it puts the database file back on the disk from that, uh, that backup set, it will then roll forward the transaction log um, transaction logs that still exist on the log volume and bring that database uh, right up to date, right up to the point at which uh, the failure occurred. If we tick this box, we would be doing what you might refer to as a point in time recovery of the database, where we would be recovering the database at the time the backup was taken and not bringing it up to date with all of the changes that occurred since. So each of those has uh, valid uh, scenarios for it. In this scenario, we want to perform a roll forward, but if you were doing a restore of some data within a single mailbox, for example, uh, you may find it's more appropriate to do a point in time recovery. So I'll just leave that cleared for now. Now we do want to recover to the original location, uh, but you do get the option if you uh, need to uh, redirect the files to a different location. So uh, in a later lesson, when we look at single mailbox recoveries, uh, that is something that we will actually take a look at but not in this case. And the recovery wizard is now ready to go. So the last thing I need to do uh, before I actually start that restore is go to the properties of Mailbox Database 2. And in this maintenance tab, I just need to mark the database as overridable. So tick this box where it says this database can be overwritten by a restore and apply that change. So we're all ready to go, click on recover, and we'll wait for Windows Server Backup uh, to finish restoring that data. That recovery is now complete, so we can close the wizard. Let's have a look at the result. So we see here on iDrive, the Mailbox Database 2 folder and files have been recovered. And we'll just have a look also in uh, Event Viewer in the application log. We can see there's these series of uh, ESC events and their descriptions that the database engine has successfully completed recovery steps. So in effect what that is is Exchange performing that transaction log uh, roll forward. So you've got the logging recovery events and bringing it up to date with all of the changes that have occurred since that last backup. You can also see in the Exchange Management Console that the database was mounted for us by that recovery process. So it is, a, it is actually now online without us having to do anything extra. 
and Alan Reed's Outlook has reconnected to Microsoft Exchange because that database is now back online and we can see that not only are the items that were in the mailbox at the time it was backed up uh, back online but also the new items that were sent and received since the last backup and we'll just double check to confirm that again within Outlook Web Access we can see the same result there those new mail items since last backup uh, have been recovered by that transaction log roll forward process so as you can see um, by separating your transaction logs and databases onto different disks you can actually uh, give yourself some good recovery options for recovering mailbox databases so you'll have your nightly backups and then if you were to lose a database due to disk failures you can do a restore and a roll forward of those transaction logs and bring yourself right up to date with all of the changes that have happened since that last backup. So that's a demonstration of a mailbox database recovery in Exchange 2010. Uh, in the next lesson we'll look at how to recover individual mailboxes and items.